I'm going to show you what we have now uh, as a setup for uh, hardware debugging. Maybe we should have done this uh, yesterday before the lab. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the setup we are using. So uh, we are going to talk about this part. So uh, until now we did have only uh, the debug proxy and the advanced detail bridge proxy. Uh, the goal of this proxy is to convert uh, GDB command to uh, GTAG commands. Uh, and then we now have uh, the open OCT proxy. Uh, here you are, you have your JTAG interface. Uh, you with blaster or whatever you want. Uh, then we have the the debug interface. We have the the Arturo virtual JTAG, the Moho uh, JTAG tab. That's the old one. And then you have the interface to the debug unit. So we have the advanced debug interface, the Moho debug interface. So here the existing solution. So the our open risk debug proxy, uh, it is not maintained. It only support the ops of use the cable. As I know, I don't know if there is other cable supported, but uh, there is no support for ultra virtual GT. Uh, we also have the advanced GTEC bridge. Uh, I said no maintain, but there is a maintainer. Like, like the new one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's responding to question and everything, so it's kind of maintained. Uh, it supports few USB interface, but it has great feature we don't have in all the proxy, as the JTAG uh, serial port. It's uh, a serial port over the JTAG and as support for Xilinx and Actel Virtual GTEC. We don't have it in other proxies, so work has to be done. Uh, why do we choose OpenOCD? Uh, it is a well-maintained and active project. It has a lot of JTEC adapter support. Uh, it has fancy tenant console to access all the debug features. You can have Chicken scripting, uh, flash programming, of course the GTP server, and it compiles on Windows for Windows user. We we have Windows user for Windows no. <laughs> uh, what was the problem when I started? Uh, Julius did some work on OpenOCD. Uh, the problem was the SPR access. We're done via the uh, QR common packet from G of GDB. Uh, OpenOCD doesn't support it like this, so uh, Julius made a hack to uh, get response from the R comment. But uh, we could have done it this way. But uh, the best solution was to. Uh, to switch to target description file in GDB. That's the way we do it, as Jeremy told me <laughs> in the first place. So what is a target description file? It's an XML file where you have all the registered description. It is sent by the remote to the GDB server client. client. So if, for example, you have the timer here described, it's in the group 10 of the architecture spec. You have the register here, the register number, and the group here. Uh, I did a change in, uh, in GDB to support the <laughs> this. Uh, I had that features, so we can uh, dynamically create groups from the target description file. So, it, uh, as you have seen here, we have the group here. For now, it is not used in the in GDB. 
So I added some uh, code in non-target files uh, to allow create register from the target execution file. Uh, I think this is a great feature, but I don't think we. It will be really. I mean, the the thing with the target description is it's only used by a small number mm -hmm. of people. So I think it, it, it's ripe for more development in GDB. And I'm not sure it would be hard to push that upstream because one of the way the target description works in GDB at the moment is it's really designed to say, I know that my target might look like A, B, or C. Have I got A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. So it really, it says things like, it's, it's is it exactly this match? Mm -hmm. And actually what you want for us, and we've got exactly the same problem with Arc, we've actually been working on this at the moment for a proprietary architecture, is you really want to say, actually, How do I have this particular group? Do I have this particular register? And I want to be much more flexible. And so you need exactly the functions you say, which are not, do I have exactly this, but tell me what I've got. And so I, I think you might find a lot of sympathy to be worth pushing upstream. Okay. That's called reflection. That's the restriction. Well, you have what you've got. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, I'm no longer an academic. <laughs> um, and this is what we remove the restriction we had in the code. We can have a general float and vectors. So they suggest we could, we can do what I did. So, so the reason for that is so that the way that target description gives it gives you an automatic info, implementation of the info functions. So if you do info reg, it gives you what's in general. If you do info float, it gives you anything that's tagged as float. If you do info vector, it gives you anything tagged as vector. But it will be nice to have other groups. But there. now, now I can do info timer, for example. Yeah. So yeah. So if you, this is what we have now, you have all these groups created from the target file. Yeah. So you can have you can do info reg set timer set the timer and we did back. So this is how it works now. Uh, this is the current status of GDB. Uh, this is the result of the registered test. Uh, this is the one we had for quite a long time now. And this is the result from the fresh uh, synchronization we did. Uh, we still yeah, so did. I'm at fault. <laughs> The this is a brand new one. It has two days. Oh, excellent. Uh, do you know why the extra regression failures are happening? No. No, I, I didn't check it. I just so ran it and did the result. So one of the, one of the things I don't properly understand is when you describe your target descriptions, you're potentially describing up to 64,000 registers. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you get around the problem of, I understood the target description then specifies the size of the register packet. How do you end up without not getting a you know, 64k size register packet? Actually, yeah. Because um, when GDB asks with the, the G packet, yeah. it asks for the, the general uh, registers. So I just send him back the registers I want to get to cache. So the system register, like we had before, like L0 to R31, NPC. And then when he get back those registers, he knows he only had, has to ask those registers the next time. So when you want, want S, the timer SPR, it knows it can't do it by a G packet. Yep. It has to do it by the specific exactly. packet. I need to understand, I haven't quite understood how you, how you force that, because I thought the target description looked that's, at that's, what the largest number of registers That's how it works in the code. It's like, it's always... Oh, well, no, you can talk me through this, because I haven't quite understood that. <laughs> I need to, 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 to see back because I can't remember yeah. exactly what it was. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. so that was the GDP part. Now the open OCD statues. Uh, we have support for the advanced debug interface. I dropped the Moho debug interface because it wasn't working that good. So to push it upstream, I wanted something really consistent. Uh, we support both uh, JTAG tab. Uh, that will be easy to integrate new tab or new debug interface because I made a flexible architecture. We can 
have a, a lot of different uh, submodules. And we can add new register from the JavaScript because OpenOCG dynamically generates the XML file from the register list. Mm -hmm. So if we have a new register, we can just add it to the register list and it's going to be automatically included in the XML file. So for debugging purpose, you could uh, create a new group with existing register and you can do like info my new group and you only have the interesting register. Uh, okay, what we have to do now is maybe work on GDB server and on a native GDB. Uh, I didn't work on this at all, but Jonas had a pretty working version and Christian took over, but it's not working good for now. GDB servers changed quite a lot, so. Mm. Uh, I don't know if we should remove the legacy uh, SPR access in GDB. I don't know. Because if the remote doesn't send the XML, we end up in the old mode. So we can uh, be compatible with, with the old debug process. But that would uh, prevent us from upstreaming it, right? Uh, maybe. But, I but upstream, no, upstream, I don't think up, we upstreaming is, it has different issues. I think upstreaming the general patches that Frank's put in to support better target descriptions, that's generic, that will be really good. But we have the general problem with upstreaming our GNU tool chain is we don't know who most of the copyright holders are. So yeah. we got, GDB is perhaps a bit easier because most of it's based on my work. So you know, yeah, I think the, whole the other stuff is source tree is pretty easy because that's basically a rewrite. Of, 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 of well, it's what we have now in the source tree is easy because it's basically what was upstream. And Julius worked on that. Peter Gavin worked on it. I have worked on it. That's the guy that has guys that have worked on the current source tree. So oh, that's GDP. easy, but GCC is a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe we can upsource the uh, upstream. But, but the old legacy SPR access, as we discovered when we um, did uh, made a change to the compiler, yeah, when we got rid of the leading underscore, we thought no one's going to notice this. And then you discover just how many old open risk systems are out there. So I think removing the old legacy SPR access, you will suddenly discover how many old systems but are out there. Tell them to use an old version then. Well, you try telling Samsung to put a new version in their set-top boxes. No, 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 no. Tell them to use an old version of GDB. You can do no, that. No, that, 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 that's, that's, that, 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 that's not good for promoting open, open risk. It's not professional. We um, can do it as a test, so we can know how much people are using open risk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, very, it's very painful it's very when you do that. <laughs> Trust me. Uh, it's also uh, interesting when you're uh, having a compiler which uh, wants to output the dwarf stuff and then try to use more GDB with that. And you'll find it, it will say it's invalid debug information. Uh, so what we can do with OpenOCD is add the more debug interface, uh, add the feature, the advanced debug, uh, whatever it's called, has the GTX serial pop. And we could implement hardware preprint and watch point, but I don't know the status of this and the RTL, so I need to check. And on the RTL side for, for debugging, I would like to implement branch stress buffer. Uh, I know it, it is supported in GDB recently. Uh, maybe some work to do on the Linux side, so that's a good thing to do. And finish. Any question? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah.